Yo, what's up guys? King Reggie here, giving you a new and improved aim training video in Apex Legends. Now I cover a lot in this video, so if I miss anything, feel free to let me know down in the comments below, but I'm not gonna keep you too long with the intro. So like the video, subscribe to the channel, and let's get right into it. Now before we get into just aiming, what we need to first understand is like our sensitivity. I know that someone commented on my video talking about sensitivity and whether this sensitivity was good for them or not, or how they should adjust it. And so let's pull up the settings right now. So on my mouse, I have about 400 DPI on my mouse and 1.24, which I think is a little bit fast, but I'm just kind of leery to change it too much. I don't want it to be a little bit slower, but I'm okay with it being fast. And that's that's kind of the point is that you don't want to really be changing too much of your settings. Now, I have ALCs on, but if I turn those off, I would be rocking a 4.4 Classic, which I think is pretty good. If you let me let me go turn these off. Four three classic is what a lot of the average people are running. It's just four three classic. It's going to keep you dead eye in mid range or mid to close range. Small dead zone. I would say it's kind of risky to go lower than three on your look ADS sensitivity. I would keep that at three. Your look sensitivity, you could maybe up it. I used to play on a 6.4 that was on console and on console it's not as fast moving as it is on pc so keep that in mind as well too that you might want a little higher sense on a console because of the lower frame rate but when i switched to pc like 4.3 was definitely good enough for me i didn't want to be moving too fast or anything but now that i'm on alcs kind of changed it my my alcs are a little bit more of a uh 4.3 linear now, I'm not going to go into all of what my ALCs do, but if you want, comment on the video ALCs and I'll kind of go over the different ALC settings and what they all kind of mean and how I was able to kind of manipulate it to fit my own style. Okay, here we are again in the firing range. I'm going to be doing another Apex aim training slash warm up routine. The last one I did was about like season 15 or so, whatever, but the firing range was old back then. And this is with the new firing range. I'm going to be showing you some of the same techniques, like everything and all the principles, they stay the same, but I'm just kind of updating it because we got this new firing range. And when you look at it, there's a lot of other things that can be done as well. And so I just kind of wanted to refresh and build off of what we did last time. So hopefully you guys also enjoy this. This is not going to be edited. I'm just doing this straight, just one cut. So without further ado, let's just jump right into the uh, basics of it. And so when we're talking about aim and apex ledges, I kind of broke it down into three different categories. First, you're going to have your tracking, you're going to have your recoil, and then you're going to have close range. You need tracking because everything's going to be moving fast in apex legends. Recoil because all the guns will have a different type of recoil pattern. For example, the R301 and the flatline. Take the flatline kind of goes up to the left stays kind of horizontal like back and forth shifty shifty r301 is just kind of up into the right and then makes a little cane at the end so first let's just start it right off with tracking now tracking is being able to follow the enemy when they're moving and being able to stay on target you see all these different moving moving dummies or moving targets whatever you want to say like those are also to help you track so what I like to do is first you can either grab the wingman or you can grab the R9. But first to kind of just make sure that my hands and my eyes are warmed up is that I just like to take this little mill dummy. I just like to put my crosshair on him and I like to just strafe back and forth about 90 degrees to the dummy each side. And with this, you're just focusing on just keeping the dummy just centered in your view. You don't want to look at the crosshair at the dot. You want to look through the crosshair to the dummy. You should be able to see different features on this dummy and if you can't then you're just looking straight at your crosshair if you do you're going to be seeing these two yellow dots right here so that's kind of where your focus should be so you want to go back and forth with this dummy you want to do this for about a minute maybe two minutes if you feel so this is just really to just make sure that you have this nice smooth movement across you'll know that if it's bad if like say you're moving to the left and you kind of just veer off and then you got to always recorrect it on there you want to try and keep this dot on the dummy as long as possible you think the sam here and this guy is moving 
if I just am looking at my target and I keep my eyes on the target, as long as I'm looking at what I'm shooting, I don't think that I'll miss by that much. The second exercise is going to incorporate a little bit more recoil control as well as some tracking. I like to take the R301. I like to stand about right here. Let's go here. And I look off into this dummy and I try to shoot the dummy while it's moving. And my goal is that I wanted to get I want to get over 200 damage. Now, if you're doing this a few times and you get over 200 damage, then up it a little bit. I just got 260, so I'm going to try and get over 260. And when you're doing this, you want to do it for about three to five times. It doesn't have to be consecutively, but try and hit over 200 consecutively and maybe get a 250, a 260 in there. Don't spend a lot of time on this, but try and just get enough to where you're able to get a good feel of where your damage is at and make sure that all the, and make sure that you're doing your best to stay on target. This is good for mouse and keyboard because you can acquire your target while it's moving a little bit more. And I have it on run speed right now. You could set it to zip line. So then your tracking just gets a little bit faster. This will also help your eyes lock in on the target a little bit more and kind of get your aim and your eyes both incorporated at the same time. So again, three to five times, try and get over 200, 250. The thing with these is that you can set a goal. And if you hit that goal pretty easily, then up your goal again. We go. This last this last tracking exercise, you're gonna get the G7 Scout. You're gonna stand in about the same spot as we stood for right here. And you're just gonna move from target to target to target to target. And you're just gonna hit every single target that you can. This is gonna help you with your bullet drop, with your target acquisition. You don't wanna go super fast with this. You wanna just make sure that you're hitting targets. Try and keep 100% accuracy if you can. So do that, bounce around these targets for say about a minute maybe two minutes. It's something that you can easily just spend your time on and it really just gets your eyes and your hands really locked in like boom, boom, boom. And you kind of just go mindless to it. What I like to do on controller instead of using the G7 Scout for this is, I feel like with the G7 Scout, I just feel a little bit slower on the controller. And I mean, feel free to do it with the controller with the G7 Scout as well, it'll work the same. What I like to do instead is take this R301 and I like to bounce from target to target to target and try and make sure that my flicks are pretty on point so that I'm able to move from this target to that target with as little of recorrection as needed. So like, just a little short little burst, you can go boom, boom, boom. Right now I feel like I'm kind of rushing it, so instead I'll just slow down. And just bounce around from target to target to target. And do that, yeah, again, for about another one to two minutes, whatever's gonna make you feel comfortable. This is probably gonna be one of the fastest ways to get your fingers and your eyes warmed up at the same time. So like, boom. So next after tracking is going to be recoil control. Now, like I said, recoil control on mouse and keyboard is gonna be just a little bit easier because you have so much more control over your aim as opposed to on controller, you have less. So with either, you wanna just kinda of stand in the same spot that we did this drill with, and you wanna pick, pick one of these two targets. You see this red square, you wanna try and keep as many bullets as you can in this red square. Something that I like to do is I like to track the headshots at the top of the screen right now, I'm at 52. The goal is to go from 52 to 152. This is with mouse and keyboard, but you, see, you hear those little sounds, like those are the headshots. When you're doing this something that like you want to understand about it is that as opposed to trying to fight with your recoil try and uh guide your recoil a little bit you know if you know what i mean like try and guide it as opposed to like trying to pull so hard away from it and when you do that tracking you're gonna just keep your eyes centered on that red square and then all the bullets should just you just picture them landing in that red square just have one after the other Okay, so we reach run 15 and we'll go on to the next part of recoil. 
So the next thing in your recoil is that you're going to want to kind of practice a little bit more long range. Now, most fights know in Apex aren't going to be long range, but understanding recoil at longer distances is going to help you because then you can push off some of that damage and then you're going to feel more comfortable at different ranges with different guns. Now, this is not that far of a range, Come with me. only Over about here. 40 meters away. You can go and up it a little bit further as well. This is about zip line here. I want to ping that zip line. I wonder what we'll find over there. About 60 some meters away. The either or is going to give you a pretty good workout on range. Now the goal here is to try and one clip the dummy. If you can't one clip it, that's fine. But just try and get some good warm-ups of recoil at a distance. And for an extra challenge, I would say turn off your aim assist. I have mine on right now, but I would say turn that off. One clips might not always happen. I don't know if I'll get one right here, but the goal is that you just wanna hit some consistent shots. Now I'll move back a little bit so I can give myself a little bit more of a challenge. That right there is not a huge challenge. That should be easy enough. Right here is going to be the real challenge. Again, to add a little bit more difficulty to this, you can turn off your aim assist, and I'd say that might be preferred. I do it sometimes here and there, but in this video, I'm not. You want to do this exercise probably for another one to two minutes. So something to keep in mind when you're doing this recoil is that you only want to have an extended mag on. Like on my R301, I don't want a barrel stabilizer and I don't want to stock it on my flatline. I don't want to stock. You want to have as much raw aim feel as you can because maybe in game you're not going to be having a stock. So you should be as deadly without a stock as you are with a stock, if that makes any sense. So you want to be able to get good damage with less attachments. You know, if you really want to challenge, you can take off the mag, but I think with the mag, it's going to give you the best practice because it's going to actually give you a full clip. It's not going to give you a half clip. And a little thing to keep in mind is that the recoil does change when you change different magazines. So just keep that in mind a little bit. I always use just the full gold or purple mags, or whatever, and I don't see much of a difference when I use lesser, but in experiment with those as you will. But the main goal is just don't have any barrel stabilizers and don't have any stocks on your weapons, just the extended mags. So one, one last exercise for recoil is that you want to work on your recoil smoothing. Recoil smoothing is a technique that hasn't been changed in Apex, but whenever you're moving left or right, you want to say you're moving to the left, you want to pull your thumbstick down to the right, or you want to pull your mouse down into the right. If you're moving to the right, you want to push your thumbstick down to the left and same with the mouse so also work on this a little bit i'm not going to spend too much time on it because it's pretty easy to get the hang of but you just want to be practicing this so that you're not afraid to use it when you're in game you just move left move to the right and this can also be the difference on like you shredding someone or getting shredded is just a single slide recoil smoothing and you can go back and forth with it too but this is a technique that only really works in close range and that kind of brings me to my next point is that one of the deadliest things in apex is being able to shred in close range especially with hip fire even even though they nerfed hip firing a few seasons ago it's still a very crucial part of apex because you still get that faster strafe speed and especially with a gun like the r9 you're able to distract someone so quickly so for this exercise you kind of want to just take a little bit of time not too long i'd say about 45 seconds to a minute two minutes at the most but straight back and forth and just shoot this dummy with a hip fire When you're doing it, I'd throw a few crouches in there. Nothing too crazy. And that's just a little, just a little light. Especially on a stationary dummy. 
but I believe the best way to train your close range in the firing range is going to be turning on these dummies. You want to go over here. You want to turn the shooting dummies. You want to turn them all the way to full combat. This is going to give you the best practice because you're able to just run around. And right now, I don't have any shield or anything, but you kind of got to make pretty fast decisions. Then you can get into this into this box, shield swap, crawl up, climb up. And this is going to give you the best practice for close range. And it's going to speed up a lot of your decision makings. This is probably the best thing that Apex added into the firing range is just having these dummies being able to go full combat. Like, no, they're still kind of dummies and they still run around like bots, but you can still get the same amount of practice because they're chasing you. You're running. You can get shredded. The main goal with this is to just not die. So see how long one of your lives can be. Now, with all of these exercises that I'm giving you, the goal is not to be spending a lot of time doing all of these. Like, yes, in a normal warm-up, I will run through most of these, but I won't run through all of them. I'll just run through what I think I'd like to be working on that day. Because you don't need to spend a lot of time in the firing range just practicing because you're going to get a lot of practice in game. You just want to come into the firing range. You want to warm up. Now, if you're serious about practicing and you have time to spend 30 to 45 minutes, then I would take these exercises a little bit more seriously and then try and find your own exercises to do and put a little more spin on what I'm giving you already. So hopefully with what I covered in this video that you were able to pick out some knowledge or some information that maybe you didn't know or maybe information that you can use in this video. Again, if I missed anything, feel free to let me know in the comments below. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel because I'm making all this Apex content to help you guys out. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.